This is just a quick unexpected video because I was looking through my research file, which is a folder that I have on my computer that has material in it that I've been collecting for a long time. And I sometimes you look back and because you've got new information now, you look back at an old thing and you go, ah, Oh, right, it's all making sense now. It's all coming together. Now, this is a bit of a gossipy video. Um, I do have things I can show you that are factual that I can back up, but it's a little bit of gossip in there because it's just an intriguing story and it's quite juicy. So I thought I'd share it with my friends. So what is this juicy story? Well, as a setup, I've got to say that I have never personally believed in the fact that Harry and Meghan met when they said they met. Now, I'm not suggesting anything nefarious or anything like that. I'm just saying dates, timeline wise. I just feel like there's something a little off there because there's been so many mistakes where something's been said in a magazine article and then a retraction has to be printed. And then um, Mission Anu actually said that she met Megan at a different time than she actually did. And then that was corrected. And sometimes dates underneath photographs of where people are supposed to be together varies and yeah, there's just a lot of inconsistency there. Piers Morgan was convinced she was going off to her first blind date with Harry in June, and it turns out it wasn't. It was her friend, Miss Harriman, the photographer. Um, but there's just, there's so much variance now. I'm convinced that it's really not what they said. Okay, so that's just my opinion, just what I believe. Okay, but I can't prove it. Can't prove it. Not sure that it's important enough to prove. But for the sake of this sort of gossipy fun conversation, <laughs> let's say, okay, maybe they met earlier. Maybe they met a month earlier. Maybe they met six months earlier. Or maybe they met in 2014. Now, why do I say that? Okay, I'll tell you. When I was reading Prince Harry's book, uh, I felt that he, the way he broke up with Cressida was very abrupt, uh, very deliberate. Now, Cressida has been reported of saying that she was quite peeved because when Prince Harry was going off to Guy Pally's wedding um, in Memphis, Tennessee, that he didn't actually buy her ticket. Now, they were supposed to go together, but he said, oh, my office has organised my transportation. You'll have to organise your own. Charming. And so she was a bit peeved, but she thought, OK, well, I'll do that. But two days before they were due to fly out for this wedding of their of William and Harry's friend, Guy Pally, um, he broke up with her. And it was quite sudden. He went around and she wasn't expecting it. Now, in spare, he acts like she knew it was coming. And, you know, even though she was sitting on the bed crying, um, you know, it was for the best and she knew. But I, I don't know. I'm reading between the lines. I think she didn't expect it. And it was quite sudden because in other books I've read, the vibe was they were going to get engaged. The vibe was that Prince William and Catherine said, oh, we love Chrissy," and Prince Charles loved Chrissy," and everybody thought that they were going to get engaged. They'd got closer and, you know, I think she thought something was going to happen. I, I think she was shocked. I th I'm sure she's relieved now because she's got a gorgeous man and a gorgeous baby and a fantastic life. Just a side note, she is genuinely talented. I checked out her Instagram. She is the loveliest person. Do you know it's a unique ability to be able to be on Instagram and not come across as up yourself or, you know, like you're blowing your own trumpet? She manages it. She's an actress, a theatre actress, like properly trained, and she, she comes across as someone rather serious-minded and artistic and talented and she can dance and she's lovely and she loves her family and she's affectionate about all her sisters and she's a wonderful auntie and now she's a mum and she's married to someone who's gorgeous and actually I don't know if she's married or just got a partner I don't know but you know she just seems like a genuinely wonderful person and I'm not just saying that at comparing her to Megan I, I really do think she was the one that got away, lucky for her, but she's an exceptional person. Anyway, back to the story. So he broke up with Cressida too abruptly, I felt. It always jarred with me and it was always like, oh, oh. 
and it was just before he went off for this wedding. Now, my suspicious mind always thought that he wanted to be free for some reason. And I thought, well, it was a bit of a boys weekend going to their friend's wedding in Memphis, Tennessee. So I thought, well, maybe he just wanted to be free to really kick it up and rage it up and have a great time, you know, a boys weekend. Turns out reports from the time said, which is quite uncharacteristic for Prince Harry, he was very well behaved at the wedding. He was to the point of sedate. He quietly chatted politely in the corner, uh, didn't dance and was just, you know, the epitome of polite wedding guesthood. Like he just didn't put a foot wrong. Whereas evidently William, who was married to Catherine, (laughs) really ripped it up and had a great time. So he was sort of having the big boys weekend. But uh, no, Harry was very sedate. So when I read that, I thought, well, that doesn't fit breaking up with Cressida. And then I found out that when they were on their way to Memphis, Tennessee, they actually had a stopover in Miami and they stayed at Fontainebleau Resort and they went out to dinner at Hackazan Restaurant that's within the resort And they had a private dining room and reports from the time there was a reporter from the Miami Herald that was actually there that night and she reported on that dinner. A source tells E! News that Harry and Co. dined at Hakazan Chinese restaurant at the hotel and at around 9.30 they were spotted by a reporter from the Miami Herald that just happened to be there that night. It was just accidental and witnessed firsthand... Harry happily chatting in the private dining room with his table mates to a brunette female in particular. Now, another newspaper report from that night said something a little more. They said that Harry was seen chatting to a tanned brunette all night, quietly and intimately. So, of course, I think, oh, my gosh, he's met Megan. But it's interesting that that was in May. And then in June, Harry comes back and sort of hastily holds these meetings with Sir Keith Mills about starting up the Invictus Games. And that all gets off the ground. And then um, Megan starts the TIG in June. So Harry's doing the Invictus Games and all sort of becoming the, the, the royal of the century. That was the time where he went into his perfect phase. From 2014 to 2016, it was like he was, all of a sudden was really trying. It was just such chalk and cheese moment. And then Megan starts the TIG and then that is right when she starts doing all these wonderful charitable works and all these sort of high-profile World Vision ambassador things and, um, you know, all all sort of a princessy type era. She starts doing all that sort of work. So then this is how my mind works. I'm thinking, okay, if they did meet May 2nd in Miami, would they do something the following year and the following year in May to sort of signify the anniversary of having met? Turns out they did. Plus, they got married in May. (laughs) Not May the 2nd, but in 2015, um, Harry had actually announced that the next Invictus Games was going to be in Toronto, and he made a flying visit to Canada for the launch. Now, I looked up what Megan was doing that night. She was doing a very, you know, wonderful charity do and speech. She looked quite the princess that night. And, um, yeah, so I don't know, I don't know. But it just it just seemed I wondered. I wondered if this tanned brunette was actually Meghan Markle. And it just always fascinated me, the quick breakup with Cressida and also the fact that she was there six months later with Mission Anu in exactly the same spot. Um, that just sort of fascinated me a bit. And one other thing was... 
Mission Anu said in a interview once, and I can't find it now, but I know I saw it. I know I saw it. She said that she met Megan in May of 2014 and Art Basel was in December. Now, later on, she did say she met her at Art Basel in December. So, but it's interesting, isn't it? And I guess the only reason why they would maybe change the timeline of meeting would be purely also from the point of view of the Invictus Games, because imagine if they really were secretly dating at that time, because maybe Corey Vitiello was just sort of like a cover story, I don't know. He might have liked the notoriety to promote his restaurant or something, I don't know. Um, maybe they had to be careful about timelines because imagine how bad it would look, the fact that the Invictus Games was awarded to Toronto and if it turned out that Harry was dating someone in Toronto, so it looks like the Invictus Games was awarded because he just wanted to be able to go and see his girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know. But that was in my research archives, that article for E! News and also an article from the Miami Herald. Let me know what you think. It would be fascinating if that brunette actually managed to come forward and tell us who she was because then that would put all my ideas to rest. Let me know what you think and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.